on the occasion of Monday Thursday after the Mass of the Lord's Supper the Blessed Sacrament is reserved in the altar of repose meaning to say that tomorrow no hosts will be consecrated at Mass also signifying that after the Last Supper Jesus goes with his disciples into the Garden of Gethsemane it is now in a way a hidden Jesus and all over the world on Monday Thursday night there is the popular devotion of the prayer at the altar of repose and we are doing that we will never tire of saying that in normal circumstances our churches and chapels would have been full for this pious devotion but because of these extraordinary circumstances and times we are getting an opportunity to create a chapel, a cathedral, a home, a prayer house within our own homes. How good can God be turning apparent wrong or vitiated atmosphere into a blessing for us? And therefore, we spend this hour in gratitude, in prayer, in supplication, in reflection, in sorrow, in thanksgiving. Prayer will only do us good. It will glorify God and warm our hearts and strengthen our faith. We have come into this house to consecrate ourselves and worship Him. We have come into this house to consecrate ourselves and worship Him. We have come into this house to consecrate ourselves and worship Christ the Praise and seeking the Lord. 
As altar servers, we longed to serve at the altar of repose. It was one day that we could be out of the house at 9 p.m. or perhaps at 10 p.m. And mom and dad would not mind us because we were serving Jesus in our church under the watchful eyes of our priests. And today we sit in our homes and I and with the fathers in our chapel serving and praising God under the watchful eyes of Jesus himself reposed for us in this most holy sacrament. It is our singular privilege not to be doing God a favor but ourselves rather because the praises of God from our hearts can only lift us up and draw us closer to God. I'd like to center today's service around the altar of repose on three themes. The three gardens we are familiar very much with the Garden of Eden in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. We are familiar also with the Garden of Gethsemane in which Jesus went through his agony We are perhaps less familiar with the garden of the tomb where Jesus was laid to rest after being brought down from the cross covered in cloth and spices and laid in the tomb. The three gardens, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Gethsemane, and the garden of the tomb. The garden of Gethsemane, as we know, was an idyllic place put together by God himself, Yahweh. The Garden of Eden had everything beautiful and bright within it. And the crowning glory of that Garden of Eden was Adam and Eve, man and woman. Everything that God had made within that garden was an act of love. Because God himself saw that he had done and it was good. We also know that something wrong happened in that Garden of Eden. We know that a relationship that was built between Yahweh and his creation was tarnished, was vitiated, was damaged and broken. We shall listen to the account of that reading from the book of Genesis. Pay attention to it and reflect on the narrative. Then the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the flesh. He formed a woman out of the rib and brought her to him. Then the man said, 
At last here is one of my own kind, bone taken from my bone and flesh from my flesh. Woman is her name, because she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife, and they become one. The man and the woman were both naked, but they were not embarrassed. Both were placed in the Garden of Eden. Now the snake was the most cunning animal that the Lord God had made. The snake asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the garden? We may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, the woman answered, except the tree in the middle of it. God told us not to eat the fruit of that tree or even touch it. If we do, we will die. The snake replied, That's not true. You will not die. God said that because he knows that when you eat it, you will be like God and know what is good and what is bad. The woman saw how beautiful the tree was and how good its fruit would be to eat. And she thought how wonderful it would be to become wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband and he also ate it. As soon as they had eaten it, they were given understanding and realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and covered themselves. That evening they heard the Lord God walking in the garden, and they hid from him among the trees. But the Lord God called out to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid and hid from you because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? God asked, Did you eat the fruit that I told you not to eat? The man answered, The woman you put here with me gave me the fruit, and I ate it. The Lord God asked the woman, Why did you do this? She replied, The snake tricked me into eating it. Then the Lord God said to the snake, You will be punished for this. You alone of all the animals must bear this curse. From now on you will crawl on your belly, and you will have to eat dust as long as you live. I will make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours will always be enemies. Her offspring will crush your head, and you will bite their heel. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That was a reading from the book of Genesis. We are concentrating now on the first garden, the Garden of Eden, where the creation story revolves around our first parents, the beautiful relationship that they shared with Yahweh, trust, love, freedom, openness, which was damaged and vitiated when they disobeyed God in doing their own self-will, in giving in to temptation and not obeying the one who created them. They listened to other voices. They shut their ears and their heart 
to the voice of Yahweh. The relationship was broken. Sin separated them from being a son or a daughter of God. So often, dear sisters and brothers, we find ourselves in a similar situation. We begin well with our homes, our married partners, our colleagues, our family and friends, our workplace. Everything is hunky-dory. And as time goes by, competition, jealousy, one-upmanship, wanting to do better than the other, seeking a promotion, pulling down one another, begins to gnaw at our heart and our soul. And very soon that is translated into acts, words, and this breaks down structures that have been built over a time of love, of trust, of understanding. It takes only a little mistake or self-will to demolish that which was built in years through the intervention of God in our life through love and forgiveness. How beautiful was that world? Great. Yahweh held out hope and that promise said a woman will bear a child and that 
woman will be threatened by the serpent who will strike her heel and she will crush its head. So right from the beginning of time, Yahweh held out a promise of hope and that hope would have a name, Jesus. The Garden of Eden, almost everything, but Yahweh would not let his creation down. And in the promise of a woman bearing a child, she promised us the savior of the world. In silence, we think about our parentage. Generations perhaps are lost to us, but we think of our grandparents, our own parents, who brought about the miracle of life in what we now call our body and our person. We are because of our parents. They are God's vehicle of putting a soul within our being, a soul that would one day be redeemed by Jesus through baptism and initiation into the life of Christ through the church. Let us look at that reposed Jesus against the gold of that monstrance and the flickering red candles in the foreground and focus our attention on that Lord while we thank him for our generations our family tree, our parents, and for young couples. Bite us together, Lord, bite us together.
So even though the Garden of Eden ended what looked like in a tragedy with a broken relationship between Yahweh and our first parents due to a disobedience, was the hope of the woman bearing a child who would fight Satan and her seed would crush the head of the oppressor. And now we move to the second garden of Gethsemane. This garden perhaps is not as beautiful as what Yahweh prepared for our first parents. But if you have been to the Holy Land, you see and feel a certain serenity within that Garden of Gethsemane with its olive trees, old and almost looking dried and dead and yet green, bearing olives. This garden was also a garden of pain. It was also a garden of searching. It was a garden of submission and faithfulness. Let us recount that passage from scripture that gives us a description of what happened after the Last Supper, as we listen to an account from the Gospel of Saint Matthew. A reading from the Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Grief and anguish came over Jesus. And he said to them, The sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watch over me. He went a little further through himself downwards on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he returned to the three disciples and found them asleep. How is it that you three were not able to keep watch with me even for one hour? Keep watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Once more Jesus went away and prayed, My Father, this cup of suffering cannot be taken away. Unless I drink it, your will be done. He returned once more and found the disciples asleep. They could not keep their eyes open. Again Jesus left them and went away and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he returned to the disciples and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinful men. Get up, let us go. Look, here is the man who is betraying me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We now move to the Garden of Gethsemane. To help us create that ambiance, we sit in the glow of the candles. 
Remember it was night after the supper and after singing of psalms which was traditionally the end of the Passover meal Jesus went with Peter, James and John to the garden. These yellow flickering candle lights will remind you later about the torch lights that Judas, the Romans and the cohort came to seek Jesus and to arrest him. What happened in that garden of Gethsemane? Wasn't Jesus the beloved of Abba Father? At the baptism, at the transfiguration, the epiphany that announced and pronounced Jesus to be the beloved Son. And here now that beloved Son enters a garden of turpidation, of fear, of anxiety, so different from the beautiful and carefree and brilliant and natural fresh garden of Eden. A long history of man's transgression and unfaithfulness to God's covenant had stained, had sullied a relationship of love. And it was the seed of the woman as promised in the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis. It was that seed which grew up to be Jesus who was now mandated to be the spotless lamb of sacrifice. And Jesus knew this. And in as much as he was ready, he was still uncertain. He had even gone to the extent of gifting at the Last Supper his body and blood under the species of bread and wine. And perhaps for one last time, he wanted to consult his father and plead his cause. And so he goes. He breaks down. He falls, he cries. Tradition tells us that he sweated blood, meaning to say that Jesus' anguish was so great, deep and profound, heart felt. And lo and behold, with him, Jesus takes his close disciple friends. And at this point, we are friends with Jesus. Keeping this visual at the altar of repose, how blessed we are. This garden of Gethsemane, Though it was not externally beautiful and well-appointed, it was scruffy and dark. This garden was brightened up by the obedience of Jesus, by a submission that went beyond ordinary human thinking. Don't be run away from pain. Don't we seek healing. Don't we seek medicines. We can't bear pain. Psychologically, we break down. We get into depression. But Jesus, his doctor was his father. He addressed his Abba. Father, if this cup passeth, 
yet not my will, but yours be done. So in one swift moment of submission and obedience, Jesus repairs the trauma and the break in relationship of the Garden of Eden between our first parents and Yahweh. He cements back into a strong bond, a relationship on our behalf with his father by saying yes. Such a contrasting response to the temptation of running away from pain and suffering. Jesus said, Abba, thy will be done. And in that precious moment, we were on the way to redemption. So the Garden of Gethsemane, while it appears to be a traumatic experience for Jesus and our hearts reach out in empathy and sympathy to the Lord, God turns it into a moment of opportunity and grace because Jesus chose to say, yes. Close your eyes for a few moments and picture a desolate, broken, bent over Jesus. Traditionally portrayed for us holding a chalice of suffering. And with your eyes closed, stay with that picture and speak to Jesus about your own suffering your own worries. Bring to Jesus the present situation of our lockdown where you want to go out to get provisions for your family you love so much and you're afraid. Where you have some person passing away or admitted to a hospital and you cannot visit to console and comfort and your heart breaks. Where you see your friends and family locked up on ghost ships on the seven seas, not getting a port to call home. Where we hear of so many of our friends and people across who have died strangers in foreign lands, heartbreaking. Our cup of suffering overflows. Tonight, look at the repose to Jesus and tell him, Lord, difficult, but give me the strength to say, yes, Abba, Father. Speak your heart to God and to Jesus. Our friend.
From the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Disobedience and Break in Relationship. We move to the Garden of Gethsemane, the Garden of Obedience, to a Garden of Deep Relationship, restored by Jesus. We now reflect for a few moments on the Garden of the Tomb the Garden of the Resurrection. In a way, we anticipate the events of Good Friday tomorrow, the events of this great silence of Holy Saturday, and the glorious events of Easter Sunday. We said earlier that Every opportunity of 
disappointment, of wrongdoing, of failure, so to speak. God, in his wisdom and love, turns into an opportunity of promise, of hope, of glory. Could you and I imagine that Jesus would be forsaken by Abba after his loving obedience and acceptance of suffering and impending death? And die he did most cruelly nailed to the cross atop the hill of Calvary. And glory of glories and wonders of wonders, those who sought to be little him, to silence him, actually killing him in their ignorance and in their bravado by nailing that little plaque above his head, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, actually mouth what for generations will call Jesus always Lord, Master and God. And after that cruel event of crucifixion and Jesus gifting his spirit to the Father, he was laid in the garden of the tomb where the great silence descended on the earth. It was a silence that would germinate into hope, into resurrection, into new life. Let us keep that deep moment of silence now. If you want to look at the screen and look at Jesus in that reposed sacrament. Look at the crucifix in your home perhaps. Look maybe with your eyes closed within your own self. Bring to your mind's eye your family, your children your loved ones, your relatives, your siblings. Hold them in your heart, in the silence of your heart and show them to Jesus one at a time. Don't say anything. Jesus knows what they need. But just in love, present them to Jesus in the silence of your heart by name. Make an offering so that what we are going through now within the family, within the family of the world, will be transformed into hope, into a joy that nothing will keep us down. But God in us will triumph.
Lord, in the three gardens on which we reflected, there is an undertone of friendship, love, relationship. In the Garden of Eden, the love between God and our parents and mankind, the relationship of trust and openness. In the Garden of Gethsemane, the love between you, Abba, and your Son and our Lord Jesus, the relationship of trust and obedience. And in the Garden of the Tomb, the relationship of faith, of unbroken trust and belief that you, Abba, would deliver and that Jesus would be true to his words which he had said and I will rise again because I am resurrection and life. We are related to this Jesus, Abba, your Son, our Lord, who is resurrected and in whose blood and water we are baptized and nourished. Thank you for this bond that exudes from that reposed Jesus on our altars tonight. May this bond carry our broken hearts right through Good Friday and the deep silence of Saturday and the sorrow of our Blessed Mother into the brilliance of Easter joy and Alleluia's. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to be with you. Thank you for ministering to us. We are richer for having spent time with you, our Lord and God. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We sign ourselves appropriating a blessing from Jesus within our homes as we make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tomorrow we will have a YouTube Way of the Cross ready for you at 9 a.m. We will try and do a Divine Mercy prayer at 3 and of course our service in the evening will be live streamed as well. God bless us all.